about six years ago, uh, some people from Indiana University approached us mm -hmm. and asked us if we would like to start some type of organization uh, about Ernie Pyle. <clears throat> and of course I asked why, and they said, well, we have a, uh, we have a lot of people contact us all the time because that's where Ernie went to school, and we really can't give them the right answers. We found out that there were family members. We didn't know that, so that's why we're contacting you. So uh, I listened to them, and it sounded kind of good. I got a hold of our family members, at which on our board, six of them are first cousins once removed, and we decided to start a foundation. In getting the foundation started, we did a lot of research and, and to find out exactly what we want to do and what our mission would be, and et cetera. And in doing the research, we found out that there was a, um, a really a situation that we probably needed to point our direction into, and that is that a lot of people don't know who Ernie Pyle is, or was, and it was the generations have passed along. Uh, we needed to do something about that. Uh, in, in order to continue and ensure the legacy of Ernie Pyle, we, we have to put our efforts in that area. So we have created a, a, a series of events in the last three years to start with a building the awareness. You have to start somewhere. And, and so we've had three major events. Last year also we created National Ernie Pyle Day. Got that through the U.S. Senate, another way to create more awareness. And then for the future, we're going to look at more educational type of programs because we need to reach the younger generation to get our message out. And that brings us to the point of, of um, Scripps Howard. Uh, our first grant for our educational program comes from Scripps Howard and it's, going, and it's, been, and it's rolled out to 660 journalism departments and the, it is under the title of the Ernie Pyle Reporter of the Year Award. Our broad mission is to ensure and continue the legacy of Ernie Pyle. That's our official mission. In doing so, we have to look at various aspects of what uh, Ernie Pyle stood for, uh, what was his accomplishments, and how is it relevant to today. So as we looked at it, we, 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 we looked at what he was, really what he was known for. He was a master storyteller. And he, was, um, uh, he, he, he had the ability to listen to people, to uh, hear their stories, and to write their stories. And he had a tremendous, also, um, uh, ability to express these stories in a human interest manner mm -hmm. so that everybody could understand them and everybody could relate to them. And basically, bottom line, he gave these folks a voice. Yes. And the voice today is something that we're lacking. We live in a different world today. Mm -hmm. And a world today is the news reporting. It's everything is either a flash or an alert. Mm -hmm. So we do not have a lot of people and a lot of columnists and a lot of journalists paying more, you know, as much attention to storytelling and with, with somewhat the, 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 uh, the average people. And Ernie's success was doing that. And we would like to continue that type of reporting in, uh, 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 in, the, in, in the journalism field today. We call it Ernie Pyle journalism, you know, storytelling, human interest storytelling. And so that we give people a voice. I mean, the, really, when we think about it in, in, in the world today, people do not have a voice. And we think if we could educate more students, especially at the student level, that they need to take that route also. I mean, you know, there's still going to be all aspects of it, but we would like to have uh, certainly more people interested in storytelling. He had the ability to um, be able to relate the feelings and the thought process that came from the individuals he was talking to. Most of the time, it's very hard to do that. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it, reporting is easy with facts and et cetera. Ernie did not deal with that, okay? He dealt with the common baseline interest of how a person actually felt. So he could transfer that on into his writings, and then when the people would read it, they'd get that same feeling. They felt, when they read his articles, they felt that they could relate to exactly to that person. And, it, and it, there's a connection there that's very hard to get.
in, in, in uh, storytelling and, and, and uh, uh, writing today. As Eleanor Roosevelt much said, she'd get up in the morning, she had a cup of tea, and the first thing she read every day was Ernie Pyle's dispatches. His career started in Washington. He was the first aviation reporter. You gotta remember aviation in those days was nothing but airmail delivery, no passengers. He became friends with all the pilots. They used to gather at his house all the time when they were there. He'd have six, eight, 10, 12 pilots there on average every day. And he became really close friends and, and, um, um, and, uh, and made contact with all of them because uh, it was not easy in those days, flying uh, in weather, et cetera. Um, so he, he became absolutely the best. He was a personal friend of Amelia Earhart and very other famous pilots. Uh, then at one point, he decided that that type of reporting, and he was also, that was just a reporting role, he was also the city desk manager. He did not want that role anymore. Mm -hmm. He wanted to get out and do what he did best, which was talking to people. So he started traveling. He and Jerry, his wife, went through the Southwest. Uh, they spent about four and a half, five years traveling South America, Alaska, and the U.S. doing what he learned, how he honed his skills, talking to people, hearing their stories, and reporting in a way that nobody else had ever done before, so people could understand it. And then, he, and of course, then the war came along, and that created a different, whole different aspect for him. And um, there's a lot of famous quotes. Um, uh, John Steinbeck's famous quote was that there were two wars out there. There was the War of the Generals that had all the uh, uh, tacticians and all the strategies and et cetera, and then there was the War of Ernie Pyle. He was in the trenches with the infantry who he loved. He did something that was um, very interesting in the beginning, um, and, and, and most people don't go back to the, to the Second World War generation, but there was complete censorship in the war. Every letter that went from the soldiers back home were censored, could not say anything about where they were at, what they were doing, nothing. Ernie fought it, and he got a change in the censorship, which, which was unheard of, that he could write back the names and addresses of the people he was talking to. That created an unbelievable situation because by reporting that back, there was no other communication during the war. People that everybody, in the, in the country had some connection with somebody in the service during the war. Everybody was in the war somewhat. A lady, a mother in Idaho, who had three sons in the war, opened up the paper the next day. She read the paper every day, and right in the paper were her three sons named and where they were from. Now you can imagine what that lady felt like. She was just unbelievable that she could hear somebody reporting back about her family. And so he got that through, and so that continued. So most of his these dispatches were nothing more than what he heard from these individuals in the storytelling role. You know, they would tell him about the war. They would tell him about back home, and they would tell him about his girlfriend. They would tell him about the mother and dad. And, uh, you know, when he gets home, he'd like to continue farming. Uh, th th that was the kind of conversation they had, which no other war correspondent ever dealt into that. They were more interested in who's attacking who and who got killed and all that stuff. So that, that, that was Ernie's expertise. And in 1944, he won the Pulitzer Prize. And he won that for most of the reporting in uh, 1943. And of course, we know the, uh, something that is, uh, comes up almost every day in one of my Ernie Pyle alerts is his most famous which is the death of Captain Waskow. I think because there were two wars, going back to a minute ago, uh, certainly I'm sure the, the, um, uh, the powers to be in America, et cetera, were interested in how the war was going. But you gotta think of a, somebody in a rural farm somewhere that has no idea what's going on because there was no communication other than a little radio. Uh, their perspective of the war was altogether different. They're, 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 they, sent their sons to war, and all they did every day is pray that nobody came and knocked on the door that day, because that's how it took. I think it will carry on. 
and I think that's one of the, our missions, and that's our purpose. Uh, Ernie Pyle was a very famous person, and if there's anybody that can get through to the public, it might be us in our foundation.